will stand and be joined together with the call to worship. Friends, we are gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of our mercy. We come together in to grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in vain we may find comfort in sorrow and hope in a gap of resurrection. Let us pray together. O oh God, the Lord of life, the conqueror of death, our help in every time of trouble, and let us not go in the dream or our pledge to your people. Comfort us to mourn and give us grace in the presence of death to worship thee, that we may have sure hope of eternal life and be enabled to put our whole trust in thy goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us hear these words of grace. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, and they shall be living. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of hell and death, because I live. You shall live also. Please join in singing a hymn of joy which may be found in the uh, hymnal, page 89. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, page 89.
You may be seated. If you would turn with me in your bulletins, let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially we praise you for Mark Mercer, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them, and help us so to believe where we have not seen, that your presence may lead us through our years, and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us share in a moment of silent meditation. Let us hear the words of God's grace for all of us. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. Christ who died for us, who rose for us, who reigns in God's right hand and prays for us. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. scripture readings for today. The first one taken from the Old Testament, Psalm 23. David wrote these words that we can take to our comfort now in our time of sorrow and loss. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord add the blessing upon the reading and hearing of this word. Mark Mercer's son, and I have some habits. 
Um, I have a poem that I would like to share with everyone that my father would like us all to do. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not see. I am a thousand moons that blow. I am the diamond flutes on the snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn's rain. I am the when you awaken in the morning flush, I am the swift uplifting flush. A quiet bird circled in flight. I am the soft star that shines at night. Do not stand on my grave and cry. I am not dead. He did not die. My dad was a wonderful person. I think that if all of us who knew him would take the one quality of you that you like the best and practice that quality every day, then this world would be a much better world. Some of his qualities that I saw in him were he was loving and caring. He never judged people. He never, never complained. He always did without so that other people would be comfortable. And he was also a great teacher. I could go on, but I hope that each and every one of you would think about the one quality that you liked best and reproduce it. I know that this world would be a much better world than my dad would have truly loved legacy. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you be with each and every person here today as we leave in peace, knowing that my dad is with you. I ask that you fill our void with the Holy Spirit so that we may go into the world and make it better for someone else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I was supposed to stand up here and uh, give support uh, to him when uh, he went uh, through this. Uh, I think uh, young men need to be commended for his strength and courage and effort through this. Um, I was asked to, to share some thoughts uh, about Mark and that. Uh, I think uh, the words could have been better said coming from his son. Indiana State Police <clears throat> was Mark Mercer. Every minute and women that you see out in the audience is you as well. Because what we hope and what we do is that we create a society that understands the importance of human life, the importance of giving, the importance of sharing all their talents and work. I truly believe that's what Mark did for the time when he was here on Earth. There's a uh, story uh, about an uh, individual who went to uh, a feast. And at the feast, there was uh, all the foods imaginable. All the uh, caviar steak, desserts and riches from all around the world. But at the table sat multitudes of people, unhappy, sad, thin, and frail. The visitor asked uh, his escort, what's, what's going on here? All the food in front of them and they still look unhappy and sad. What's going on? The escort said, we only have one rule, and one rule only that you use the utensils that are placed before them. They went to another banquet hall. Again, all the food of the world were there. All the desserts, all the cakes and pies, all the meats that anyone could ever want. But the folks around this table were full, happy, sharing and joyful. The visitor asked his escort again, what's going on with, with this group, with this hall? We only have one rule, and one rule only in this, this place is that people use the utensils that are placed before them. The visitor looked at the utensils that were there. They were 10 feet long, the people in the first hall 
trying to feed themselves with 10 feet long utensils just couldn't be done. They were starving themselves. They were wasting away. But in the other banquet hall, they were taking those utensils and passing it to their friends across the table. That's the sharing. That's the life that we give and we owe to one another. That we pass the utensils and that we share and feed one another. I hope that in the life of Mark, that we understand that he was sharing and giving all the time. And that that's his legacy. We should do the same. She asked that I, uh, I share a song. Kind of hard to do. Um, that's what we could do to to him, so uh, I'll stand by and do that for me. take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If you had known me, you have known my Father also. Henceforth you have seen him. You know him and have seen him. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will pray to the Father, 
and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have a tradition in our congregation that the middle hymn is what we call a prayer hymn. And we invite our folks to come forward as we sing this hymn to pray at our altar as they wish. And as we sing this one, I invite you to come forward and pray. Give thanks for Mark's life or pray whatever may be on your heart. So will you please stand as we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4 of hymn 110, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, as Officer Myers comes to lead us.
Let us pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we give thee thanks for your intervention into our world. Through your word and your prophets and your covenant making with your people and above all with Christ. There are times when life stretches us to the limit and we find ourselves coming apart. But behind all the stresses and strains of life, there is your love and your grace which surrounds us. And you are there when we need you the most. As was written in the poem about where you walk with a person, and they said, where were you? When I needed you the most, I see there are only one set of footprints. And you said to that person, that's when I carried you. And so today we turn to you because we need for you to carry us and give us strength and hope. When our hearts are breaking, at the loss and the passing of a dear friend. So, dear God, we ask your special blessing to be with Pam and Ryan, with Mark's family, and with all those who have loved him and know him the most. As they walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we ask that you surround them with your love and your grace and your mercy. Help us all, O oh God, to lift our eyes above the darkness of death to the light of your glory. In the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who came that we might have life and that we have, may have it abundantly. So, dear God, when we see and reach the limits of our strength and of our understanding, may your grace and your presence and your power take over and carry us through. All these things we ask in Christ's name, who taught us to pray that perfect prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. This is dedicated from Mark to his family, and not only his immediate family, but the state police family where he lived for so many years and brought so much light and so much love.
I invite you to turn with me to our scripture lesson that's printed in our, our insert from the epistle to the Hebrews. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere what are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for you have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. This is a quote from Psalm eight, verses eight, six, seven, and eight. Now, in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made more than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by, by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. Thus ended the reading of God's holy word in Hebrews. Carl Whitfield lives in a small mining town in Kentucky. And over the past 20 years or so, he has a habit of meeting with a small group of men at one of the churches in that community. They meet uh, for about 30 minutes. They have some coffee and some rolls and swap a few lies with one another and then close with prayer and sometimes some sharing. Over the years, the group has changed. There was a group that started about six or eight. There have been some additions, and there have been some subtractions over the year, either because of illness or death or other reasons. But one Friday morning, as they were gathering and having their coffee, they began talking about life and how good life had been to them. Each man shared how richly he had been blessed by God throughout his life. And as you, as you would think of that, you would say, well, here is a group of men who have not experienced the hard side of life. They have not endured suffering or heartbreak or disappointment. But that is not true. One of them had lost his eye in a work-related accident. One man had just recently lost a son, his only son, in a tragic automobile accident. Two of the men had been involved in mining accidents and had lost limbs. And one was going through a tragic and passionate and painful divorce. Yet each one of these men found and looked upon life as being filled with blessing despite the things that had broken their hearts, despite the things that had injured their bodies, despite the things that sometimes had fractured their families. Were they, how were they able to do that? How were they able, in the face of their tragedy and their hardships, to also see the blessings that God had given them? Were they just pretending? Men, I think as a rule, have a very, often will bury our feelings, we will bury our feelings in high our breaking hearts. But it was not true with these men. God had walked with them, the creator of the universe, the one who had made them a little lower than the angels, had walked with them through each and every difficulty they faced. The man who was going through the divorce still had to deal with his feelings. He still had to deal with the death of a dream and all of the other feelings that surround such a human experience. But he also had discovered that he was not going through that painful experience by himself, that the creator of the universe was with him each step of the way, each decision he had made, each tear that he shed. Our scripture lesson says to us that God is aware and concerned about what is happening to us. This group of men in Kentucky had experienced that. And therefore, and they discovered that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ was walking with them as they walked through the valley of the shadow of death. We cannot always control the circumstances of our lives. In fact, most of the time we can't. But we can control our response to what life deals us 
and how our hearts are being broken and what are the things that face us. As Abraham Lincoln once said, most people are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. God's grace is acting in our lives even when we are unaware of it. Peter Atkinson was walking around the wall while his wife was doing some shopping. It was a beautiful summer day, so he thought he'd go out and sit on the, the patio outside the, the wall under a shade tree, just across the walk from a deli, which was very busy. As he was there enjoying the sunshine and the flowers and the watching the people coming and going, he heard a kind of a rustle of papers, and he turned around, and there was a bag lady who really seemed to be kind of out of place in this setting. And she was going through the trash can next to the deli and finding bits and pieces of food and putting them in this sack and in that sack. And as she was doing this, the lady who owned the deli came to the door and observed what she was doing, and he thought, well, any moment she's going to come out and holler at this lady and run her off. But she didn't. She went back into her business establishment, brought out a sandwich, gave it to this lady, gave her a few coins, gave her a, a big hug, and they stood there for a few moments and talked. And Peter could see that these were two old friends. God's love, God's grace had enabled them to break through the barriers that normally divide us. Economics, race, social status, whatever. And here were two people who despite their great differences had a great deal of affection. Our assurance in the face of death comes from God who created us and redeemed us through Christ. God's love has a love that can reach down into the very depths of our being and transform us and bring healing to us when our lives and our hearts are, break, are breaking. Our scripture tells us that God has made us a little more than his angels and he's put us in control of this world and calls us to make this world a place where everybody has an opportunity and receives its blessing. As Jesus says in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, I came that you may have life and that you may have it abundantly. As we heard that was shared with us earlier, I believe Mark Mercer lived an abundant life. Now, abundant life does not mean we have a fat bank account or a fat wallet. Abundant life is a life where we are blessed with family and friends and love and things. Mark Mercer had a loving life, a devoted son, a son who admired his father and who was able to stand before you and tell you how much his father meant to him. We were together in the room when Mark passed away. Mark and Ryan and Pam and the family, brothers and sisters. And you could see the affection that this son has for his father. And you could see the support that his family gave to him to the very end of his life. The many people who came to the funeral and for you who came here today are a tribute and a testimony to Mark's character and what he meant to you. You who work with him side by side. You who were part of his profession. Mark had another family. The Indiana State Police, or the troops as they call themselves. My mother-in-law is a troop widow. And all during the week, but I was taking her to some treatments that she is receiving. She would say, well, how's Mark doing? And I would tell her. And then when he passed away, we got talking about that. And she said, what about the truth? She said, you know, they are like family. They are like 
him. And while I was at the hospital with the family, there were some troops who were there. Some came and went, but they were there. This week we have worked closely with several of them to plan this service, and this service in a way is a tribute to those who have been a part of it. And he saw this as an opportunity to express their love. You see, death seems to close the door on all that means anything, all that gives our life meaning. But death does not have the last word. God has the last word. And that last word is resurrection. Just as death could not hold Christ in that tomb, just as the Roman army could not prevent God from rolling that stone away, God will not let death hold Mark Mercer. He will share in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When he could barely walk, when he could barely talk above a whisper, he and Pam and Ryan came to church and said on that side about the middle of the way back. He left behind for our congregation and for those of you who know him and you are part of his family, he left behind a legacy and a testimony of a man with character and values, but also a man who had a relationship with God through Jesus. Today we grieve his life but we are also celebrating who he was and the gifts he gave to us. Mark A. Mercer was a gift of God to his wife, to his son, to his family, and to us, and to this church. He will not be forgotten. And his memory has been in printed upon our minds and our hearts, and we will carry them with us forever. As the scripture says, God made us a little more than the angels, and put us in charge of this world. And in Mark's life, you can see that miracle be working out. And in the career and profession he chose, he tried to make this world a better place and a safer place for your family and for mine, for your children and my children, for your grandchildren and for my grandchildren. Let us pray. Dear Father, you have given to us many abundant gifts. But the ones that mean the most to us are the lives that touch our lives. It may be a man like Mark, or our mother, or a teacher, or someone else. But today we come together to grieve and share our sorrow, but also to celebrate a life that was well lived, and to surround this family with our grace and our love and our hope, saying thank you for letting us share this, the miracle of his life with us. So be with these who have must walk through the valley of the shadow of death, May your spirit and your presence always be with you. In Jesus' name. Please stand. Join in singing the hymn of faith found in your hymnal, number 593. Here I am, Lord, number 593.
statement of a song, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need, and for all everywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways, teach us to trust in you. O God, all that you have given us is yours. As first you gave Mark to us, so now we give Mark back to you. Receive Mark into the arms of your mercy. Raise Mark up with all your people. Receive us also, and raise us into a new life. Help us so to love and serve you in this world, that we may enter into your joy in the world to come. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Mark. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive Mark into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints of night. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and keep you this day and all your days. Amen. Amen.